Welcome to the Startup Pregnant Podcast, where we talk to creative leaders about what it means to be an entrepreneur and a parent. I'm your host, Sarah K. Peck. Hey, everyone. I wanted to tell you about a contest we are running at Startup Pregnant. So we are doing a series, this 10 Core Values series. And for each mini episode, every day over the next two weeks, we are having a contest where you can win lots of amazing prizes. The prizes include one-on-one coaching to business books by amazing women authors to more. There's lots of fabulous goodies. The way you play is like this. At the end of each of these episodes, there is a reflection question for you to think about. So listen to the 10 minute episode and then answer the question. Go pop over to our blog at startuppregnant.com and write your answer to the question. And every time you post a comment, you get get another chance to win. So the contest is open November 13th through November 30th, 2017. So I hope you enjoy, take a listen to this episode, and then go leave a comment on our blog to play in the contest. Welcome back, everybody, to the 10 Core Values series. We are doing a series of 10 episodes looking at our core values of the startup pregnant philosophy. Today, we get to talk about number eight. Number eight, feelings matter. This is one of my favorite of all of our philosophies. So feelings matter. What does it mean? I hope you're nodding along, listener, and maybe you already know inside what this means and you know what it is that we're going to be talking about. This one is both a hard one and it's a simple one. And I like to think of what Carl Jung says about life being a paradox. His quote is, The paradox is one of our most valuable spiritual possessions. Only the paradox comes anywhere near to comprehending the fullness of life. So here we go. Let's dive into this paradox. Our emotional landscapes, our feelings, who we are inside, it is so important and it's so often undervalued. And in the business landscape today, in the work culture that we have today in our society, A lot of it says that feelings don't matter. Buck up, pretend, ignore it, hustle past it, push through it. All of these tools are tools to use to get past the human experience and to go beyond it in order to achieve this model of what we think it means to work. Yet, I'm not convinced, based on one of our previous core values, that what work looks like today is actually working. So we believe with the startup pregnant core values and the startup pregnant philosophy, we believe in the call for a greater emotional dexterity, more resilience within our emotions, a better understanding of them, the ability to name them, to map them. There's a subtle nuance here because it's not just feeling the storm clouds. Like if you've ever seen a toddler and they get taken over by a storm cloud of emotion and they, my toddler, you know, he spins into a rage sometimes, but I wanted that thing. Ah! It's not about just being subject to the flits and the the whirling dervish of the emotions, but it's not ignoring them either. It's being able to know them and feel them and work with them. So in no uncertain terms, this core value means that you are allowed to be your whole self and all of you is welcome at the table in the room. To us, this one says all of you is welcome here. We don't operate this way yet in society or in work, at least not in my experience. And in the experiences I see in the women that I'm interviewing, a lot of times we keep stuff hidden away or we forego talking about it or we ignore the feelings that we have. And for me, pregnancy was this wake up call. It said, you will pay attention right now. Hello, Sarah, pay attention. And through it, I started to learn that these emotions and these feelings that have been suppressed actually have a lot of value and wisdom to give us. In Brene Brown's recent book, Braving the Wilderness, she talks about pain. In this quote, I'll read, she says, not caring about our own pain and the pain of others is not working. And she asks a question, how much longer are we willing to keep pulling drowning people out of the river one by one? rather than walking to the headwaters of the river to find the source of the pain. So much of the work that we do is symptomatic. We look at a symptom and we address it rather than finding the root of the problem. Where is the pain coming from? Where is the feeling coming from? 
Her book is all about doing those things that feel scary and uncertain and risky and wandering into new territory. But pain has a purpose. She says pain is unrelenting. It will get our attention. Despite our attempts to drown it in addiction, to physically beat it out of one another, to suffocate it with success and material trappings, or to strangle it with our hate, pain will find a way to make itself known. This is true in labor. I remember when my doula told me the story about pain and childbirth. And people asked, why is childbirth so freaking painful? Like, what is the purpose? And she said, the pain had to be great enough for it to get our attention. And this was really fascinating to me because think about when you have different signals that start out as a whisper and a hint and different feelings and you're able to override them and say, oh, I won't pay attention now. Like going to the bathroom. Raise a hand if you've ever been sitting and doing work and gotten the signal from your body, oh, I've got to pee. And you go, I'm just going to cross my legs and sit here and get this next thing done. And you keep going until the signal is loud enough and it's like, hello, time to go now. You can't put this off any longer. Well, it's the same with childbirth. She said the pain needed to be loud enough to focus you, to make you stop doing anything else and get you right here in the present moment and doing the thing that your body had to do. And I thought that was so wild about how our emotions and our feelings work to teach us things. How do we listen in? How do we start to tap into this wisdom? We think that it really becomes impossible to experience the highs of the human experience if you don't also allow ourselves to experience the lows. And so when we start to suppress or ignore anger, sadness, rage, pain, the uncomfortable feelings, we actually also limit the scale of feeling happiness, excitement, or joy. What if these emotions and feelings that are suppressed actually have value and wisdom to give us? And it's different across gender and experiences of sex. So women in the society in general are put into silos where they're encouraged to feel sad or tired. Those are expressions that are allowed. But they're less trusted if they express anger or frustration, right? To be an angry woman is to be diminished or ignored. And that word hysterical, right? That means you're untrustworthy. Why we have feelings named after our body parts is astounding. And men are also put into lanes. They are expected to show bravado and aggression, confidence, or anger. But they are not often expected to show fear, sadness, or sorrow. Boys don't cry. That quote is such a shaming thing we do to the men in this world, the men and boys. There's a documentary, I believe it's called The Masks We Wear, and it talks about how the phrase be a man is one of the most damning phrases we can use for the men in our lives. Men, women, and more, all humans have such a rich range in their emotional landscapes. And we believe that allowing us to experience our feelings, allowing us to start to name them, to experience them, name them, understand them, listen to them, even just sit with the question, what is this? What is this feeling? Where is it? Where is it in my body? How does it feel? What happens when I feel it? What are the words I have to feel this? That is a tool that leads us to higher levels of consciousness, of connection, of personal well-being, and of growth. Now, what's really interesting to bring this back around to the business side, I started in the beginning to talk about how in business, we're not supposed to express these feelings and these emotions. But in business, one of the very definitions of what startups and products and businesses do is that they're to exist to solve what? They solve a pain point, right? We're trying to reduce friction and solve customer pain points. That's the technical term. We're trying to help people make their lives better. And what we have to do in order to do business well is to identify the emotions that people are feeling at any given time and understand and empathize with their experience. But arguably, how do we understand and emphasize with somebody's experience if we're not willing to understand our own experience. So this is, I think, the crucial loop that has not been closed when we try to separate business and human emotions because they can't be separated because businesses exist to solve human problems. And in order to get better at solving human problems, we also need to get better at understanding the human experience. So in two words, feelings matter. The question for today's episode what are the words for the emotions that you feel the most? How do you access your own emotions and feelings? And 
what words have you not ever used to describe your feelings? So take a minute and reflect on this episode. Tell us what you think about it. What does it mean when you hear me say that feelings matter? What's your response to that as a business philosophy? Go ahead and leave your reflection over on the blog at startuppregnant.com. We have a blog post for every single episode, and you can get straight to the blog post from the show notes in whatever place that you're listening to your podcast. If it's in iTunes, just click on expand in the show notes and click on the link that says startuppregnant.com slash episode number whatever. And then you can hop right over and leave a comment on our blog and see what everybody else is sharing with their experiences. So grateful to have you here on this journey with us. And we will bring you to number nine next. See you on the next episode.